Self-storage is big business and helps create space in our overcrowded homes. I'd be going around in circles, I really would. It's so overwhelming. But some have taken their storage hoarding a little too far. Why? A special offer. <laughs> Clinging onto things they never see or use. She thinks they're worth absolutely nothing. And it's costing them a fortune. We've had the storage for over six years now, and we've probably spent almost £20,000. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. This is my mum. In fact, this is my mum's ashes. I'll be asking hoarders to open the doors of their units. Empty out their stash. It's been a while since we've been here. I can smell the mildew. And choose to either keep it... I'm feeling a little emotional. ..skip it or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden treasures. Definitely. We have to send these to auction. That's what I like to see, ma'am. Excitement. ..to take to auction and make some hard cash. In today's show, we meet two very different storage hoarders. One who's hoarding for investment... Some of it has been with me for 40 odd years. ..while the other is storing his whole life in containers. Wow. There's 220 boxes. 220? Are you kidding yeah. me? Time for their stuff to stand up and be counted or end up in the skip. This all needs going in the bin. As we unearth the real treasures from the trash. Five, seventy. I don't know about you, but this is nerve-wracking. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Storage centres are popping up all over the place as we keep more unwanted items under lock and key. I'm in North London helping two guys sort the treasures from their tat. I'll be getting tough as I ask them to keep it, skip it or sell it. Today's first storage hoarder is avid collector Stephen Redmond. He's been storing his prized possessions under lock and key for over two years, costing him £2,700. Daughter Haley thinks it's time to kick the habit, but is Dad in denial? I'm not a hoarder, no, I'm a collector. And if you collect things, then you've got to save them, you've got to put them somewhere. Stephen currently lives in Bath. However, his job used to take him all over the country and wherever he went, his ever-increasing collection went too. Some of it has been with me for probably 40-odd years. However, his possessions soon outgrew his home. I think Dad started putting things in storage when the women in his life stopped letting him keep it out in the house, really. He just started having to keep it somewhere that we couldn't see it, really. But Stephen has always been a collector. I used to collect toy soldiers when I was about seven or eight, but then when I was about 14, I collected DC comics, and these were Batman, Superman, things like that. Stephen enjoys dressing in style. Tailored suits and the accessories that go with them have always been an obsession for him, especially the cufflinks. His father kicked off his collection of cufflinks and he hasn't looked back since. His storage unit is also home to paintings and signed books, along with some rather unusual possessions. I've got some of my mother's ashes and I've also got my father's ashes and my son and daughter's milk teeth, the tags when they were born. They're not going anywhere. I'll always keep them and then maybe they'll have them after. It is funny, particularly when you see his, his collection of my baby teeth. But she always threatened to make a necklace out of, but I don't think he ever did. Daughter Haley wants to help her dad get to grips with his hoarding habits and force him to part with some of his stuff. I'll make sure he gets rid of the things that really need to go. He's not going to be able to keep a lot, if it's my say. I will expect her to be tough with me, but she knows who's boss. Can I help Stephen to part with his beloved collections and say goodbye to storage? So tell me, what have you been collecting, Steve? Books that have been signed by the authors, so I've collected maybe a hundred and odd of those. Mm -hmm. And then paintings, all, all sorts of pencil drawings, maybe again, 100, 150 of those. So what's the plan today? The books. I bought them as an investment and I hope um, I could put them out there on the market for fellow collectors. OK. And also the paintings, if they work out, then I'd be happy to let the books and the uh, paintings go. The cufflinks, I want some professional advice on them because uh, two and a half thousand pairs, that's a lot too. No. Two and a half thousand pairs of cufflinks? Yes, well, How I How many mean, arms do you have? Um, only two, and I'm working my way through them slowly. What are these cufflinks made of? Are they solid gold? Oh, they're all sorts, as all you'll sorts. see. There'll be diamonds in there. There'll also be uh, cufflinks made out of plastic, uh, all sorts. I'll eat my words at the, if neither the books or the paintings mm -hmm. make any money, but I'm convinced the cufflinks on this scale will. Yes. 
What would you say to your dad, Hayley? I'd say a lot of it could just go, could just be dumped or given to you know, a charity shop. But some of it, I think, has got a value. Yeah. But it is time now. So are you ready to start this process? Absolutely. Are we ready? We're ready. Yes. Come on, We're let's ready. do it. I am determined to get Stephen's hoarding under control. And with Haley's help, it might just be possible. Our next storage hoarder is financial consultant Reg King. Reg has spent most of his working life abroad, keeping his worldly possessions in storage to the tune of £4,800. Best friend Tony thinks Reg needs to get a grip on what he hangs on to. But does Reg think he has a problem? Well, I'm a, a serial hoarder, and I have a, a very big problem in deciding what stays and what goes. Um, I become very attached to my stuff, and so I, I, I need a bit of, uh, let's say, professional help. International banker Reg is now back in the UK and temporarily living in Sidcup with his mum. Most of his possessions have come from places as diverse as Hong Kong and Saudi Arabia. And his mother has no doubt who's to blame for her son's hoarding habit. His father, he was a hoarder, but he got rid of it, which is more than I can say for my son. I've always been a serial collector. I was at boarding school and I started collecting stamps. It just built up and built up and a little bit out of hand now. My tastes have changed, and I think it's time to take this opportunity to downsize, get rid of the stuff that I no longer like. I've got lots of things that don't match, and I think uh, if you put them all in the same room, you just think, oh, no. As a self-confessed hoarder, Reg understands he has a problem letting go, and his friend Tony is on hand to help make decisions. I hope that I'll have a positive role in influencing Reg as to what he should keep. Well, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. All the best. But I know that at the end of the day, he has very fond memories with some of these items. He's a little bit sentimental. He won't get rid of everything. I think my family believes that uh, I won't be able to shift much stuff. I disagree. Um, let's see what happens. Can I help Reg part with his worldly goods and divorce him of a life in storage? Now, what do you have in storage? I've got pretty much my whole life uh, in that container. And why are you storing it? I'm a bit of a nomad at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I was living in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and I've come back to the UK and basically got nowhere to put it, and so I've just left it here. Oh, I see. And I've decided I've got too much stuff anyway. Aha. Uh -huh. Because I've been downsizing. Do you want to downsize further, or...? Downsize further, mm -hmm. get rid of a lot of stuff that I've been carrying around for many years right. that I just don't use. Yes. I think it's a great opportunity to have a look, because I've not seen it for over 18 months. I see, right. And some of it I've not even seen for about six years. Is that right? Yeah. Tony, are you up for getting stuck in and helping out Reg today? Of course. I'll be more than happy to assist Reg in throwing away some of his stuff and hopefully deciding on what items that he, he should try and sell. Reg is hoping that the items in his unit could be converted into cash to pay for a dream trip. I'd like to go to Antarctica. Yes. See a bit more of the world. Yes. Yeah, that's, okay. that kind of thing. Right. Should we get going now? Absolutely. Let's do it. OK. We've met our hoarders in need of my help. It's now time for them to come face to face with a lifetime of clutter. Coming up, Stephen sorts through two and a half thousand pairs of cufflinks. Two or three bags done, 350 to go. While Reg needs to work on his strategy. Have you got some sort of plan? Please say you do. I don't have a plan. <laughs> oh, no. Hello and welcome back to Storage Hoarders, the show where I help people clear up, clear out and start the search for hidden cash. Earlier we met magpie Stephen Redmond and his daughter Haley, whose passion for collections outgrew his home. And serial hoarder Reg King, who's locked his whole life away in storage. Later, our antiques expert will take a stroll through their hoards and pick out the treasures from the trash to take to auction. First to come face to face with his enormous stash of memorabilia is self-confessed collectaholic, Stephen. Wow, look at those. Yeah, it's more than I thought. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know what's in all of these. 
This looks like it's going to be a long process. Right, shall we get started? I don't think I even put some um, labels on. Oh, maybe I did. Look. Yeah, oh, it's oh, fragile. books. Oh. So they're nice. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> I better get in there before they break anything of value. Oh. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Um, <laughs> do you want an honest answer? Yeah, no. You can see why they never made the walls of anywhere I live, can't you? Yes, yeah. So did you buy these or Yeah, I'd buy gift? them, you know, yes. with this gifted eye I've got. I'd buy them thinking this will this will be really valuable one day. Uh -huh. And here they are now in a box. Hmm. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see if the expert yes. la laughs out loud like you did or, or gives me some proper valuation. <laughs> We'll see later if Stephen's gifted eye has spotted a future investment. Next to confront his storage predicament is international banker Reg and his close friend Tony. Reg's belongings have been shipped 3,000 miles from Saudi Arabia. Wow. Will you look at that lot? There's quite a few boxes in there. Absolutely fantastic. This is going to be fun. I hope so. This is the first time Reg has been reunited with his worldly goods since they've gone into storage. This is my old train sets in the boxes and everything. This was probably going back to about 1953. This brings back some childhood memories. All good. I'm amazed you've kept things like this. Time for me to help Hoarder Reg work out just where to start. Oh, my goodness me, you've got such a lot of boxes. I know, oh. I know. So have you got some sort of plan? Please say you do. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, oh you I feel like better that. now. Yes, I do. <laughs> tell, tell me what the plan is. I don't have a plan. Oh, no. Tony, do you have a plan? I don't have a plan. Oh, come on, I thought this... you were going to mastermind this. From... Well, I am, but there's 220 boxes. 220? Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, 220, yeah. That's a lot of boxes that need opening, so a plan is very important. What we need is a bit of rationalisation, OK? I want you to identify about 20-odd boxes containing stuff that you know you want to look at and maybe let go of today, OK? OK. OK, thank you. Get well, moving, thank you. OK, so let's make a start here, then. I'm giving our hoarders just a couple of hours to clear their units. I want them to split their possessions into three categories. Keep it for the things they really love, skip it for those unwanted pieces, and sell it for the things that could make some money. I've also added a charity bin for those items too good to throw away. We've got two or three rugs. Right, I'll keep this one for sentimental purposes. Do you find the same one? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, Do you see what she said to me? To Steve, Steve with, with love, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take this home. I don't think I'll put it on now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the hard work begins. Oh. It's time for them to get serious with their stuff. Any idea? No idea whatsoever. This all needs going in the bin. Stephen and Haley are off to a decisive start, sorting Stephen's mammoth stash of collectibles. While Reg and Tony are getting distracted, unearthing exotic treasures from far-flung places. So, Reg, what's in here? This... I know what this is. That's good. You remember this. I do remember this. You, you do remember that about 34 years ago. And I was with you. You were in, in Bangkok. In Bangkok, yes. Still looks in good condition. It's silver. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. No, it's nice. So I what? always had to buy a souvenir from each city or country I went to. Yeah, yeah, I can remember that. I've got fun memories of this. That's been around the world a few times, hasn't it? Yes. Reg can't help buying souvenirs while working overseas and occasionally gets some out-of-the-ordinary gifts too. He's unearthed some Arabic paintings with royal connections and has no idea about their value. Hello, what's Hi, this? How what are these doing? amazing looking paintings here? Ah! You didn't do them yourself, did you? No, I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could. But these go back to when I was in Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. There's three of them here, yes. and these were painted by HRH Prince Khalid Al Faisal. So why did he give these to you? Um, he was a personal friend, uh -huh. and uh, we, we uh, just did a little bit of work together. Uh -huh. And uh, he sent these pieces over to me. How amazing! They take up quite a lot of space, don't they? Well, they, they? do, and you, you, you know you need quite a big place, and. Uh, so these two have remained in storage. And the middle one, this one here, uh -huh. uh, 
if you look at the back, you can see the string, lots of string and rope. Oh, yes. I, I had that hanging up uh, in my villa. What do these paintings mean to you? Well, they remind me a great deal of the time I spent in Saudi with my friends. They bring back fun memories. And whilst they're beautiful, they're also a little bit big, <laughs> yes. to say the least. Yes, for your minimalist new uh, for pad. My, absolutely. So I was thinking uh, perhaps somebody uh, could uh, t take, them o take them over and uh, use them or enjoy them uh, as much as I have. Uh -huh. So you're thinking that you might sell these paintings? I'm seriously considering it, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. We'll do that under advisement. Contemporary Arabic art is increasingly sought after by London's wealthy Arab elite. So to get an idea of the true value of Reg's paintings, I've sent him to speak to an expert on the subject, gallery curator Jamie Dillon. It's a great honour to be given these by a Saudi prince, but uh, I keep downsizing and uh, I really don't have anywhere for them yeah. anymore. It, it seems such a terrible shame just to keep them in a garage. Well, well, it is a tragedy, up. of course, yeah. You have something very important there. Yeah. So I was pleased to see them. Now, you know that Prince Charles and him are obviously very, very good friends. They're yes. The closest friends. Yes. They both paint. Yes. Both um, very senior royals. Like Prince Charles, these paintings never really get sold. They give them to their closest friends. Yeah. They give them to very good uh, servants, mm. uh, people they've trusted. Mm. In the Arab world, Art is very important, it's very important to their culture. But I know a little bit about this particular artist, mm. and he's very important in his position within yeah. the art world. Yeah. Saudi citizens would love to own these. I think in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a similar gallery near Knightsbridge, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw on each painting anything between 15 and 20,000. That's what I think. Wow, wow. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> that is a staggering valuation, and Reg could be sitting on £60,000 worth of art. So is he now tempted to sell? When I went in, I had absolutely no idea about their worth. And to me, to be quite honest with you, the, 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 the sentimental value is worth a lot more than that, actually. Um, it, it was a great honour to be gifted those uh, paintings. Um, but I'll have to rethink now because they're worth so much money and um, it seems a terrible shame just to keep them in storage. I think my next plan of action is to have a good think. Um, I don't think I'll let them all go. I might keep one. We'll see. I, I, I just got no idea at this moment in time. I'm still in a state of shock. Reg has some serious soul searching to do, but at least he wants these valuable paintings to be admired and not locked away in a storage unit. Meanwhile, back in North London, Stephen has uncovered his treasured collection of cufflinks, all two and a half thousand of them. Some of these cufflinks were, were for ladies, I think. Amazing. So fragile, small. God, I could be here for weeks. Oh, look at the vices, look. Women, look, there's a can, -can dancer. And wine. wine or champagne, poker or gambling. And horse racing. That's well, both gambling, though, aren't they? Yeah. Well. Oh well. Two or three bags done. Three hundred and fifty to go. Stephen has been adding to his extensive collection for over twenty-two years. So when did this collecting of cufflinks start? Well, I didn't know it was going to be a collection, but my father gave me a pair um, when I was about fourteen. Mm. But it wasn't really until I. Um, gained a management position in my career that I bought a new suit and I ended up with a French cuff shirt mm. and wearing one pair, well, it wasn't going to do it for me. I thought I could, you know... Stretch to two and a half stretch thousand. Stretch to two and a half thousand, yeah, and wear them so that they match my pocket handkerchief and my tie mm. so I could look dapper. And so generally you're not buying new ones? I never buy new. Occasionally I get some as gifts. But the older is, the better for me, and there's more character mm -hmm. in them as well. So, no, I don't buy new. I want them to be antique, i.e. 100 years old, mm -hmm. or, you know, certainly getting that way. Right. What's the most you've ever spent on a pair of cufflinks? Um, I think about, round about £1,000. Some I may have spent £3 on, maybe worth a lot more mm -hmm. than that now. If there is value in his cufflinks, Stephen may well be tempted to sell. 
The clock's ticking and I want to help Stephen and Haley sort through the last of their items. I like how um, Dad's sitting hey, around, Elfie, standing isn't there, around uh, directing all the operations. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty normal for him. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's a good job the girls are here to help carry the load, isn't it, Stephen? Clearly in storage, it's not being used, is no. it? No, no. Nothing in there. No. And, uh, so it's that charity shop, do you Definitely, think? definitely. Yes. I'll carry this. I'll okay. carry this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stephen isn't the only collector in the family. Haley has also found a box of her whimsy figures and they're straight onto the cell pile. Meanwhile, Reg is focused on the job in hand and has unearthed an unusual metal dragon and some ornamental chess sets to sell. I play chess, yes, yes. These are more just for looking at and appreciating that. And selling, maybe. And selling, maybe. Yeah. That's good work, Reg. So what else are you prepared to part with? The maps of the UAE and Abu Dhabi, they were quite expensive at the time. They're proper cartographer's maps, but they can probably go. However, his ability to not let go soon comes to light. This is my microscope. Your microscope? Yeah. Oh, what do you do with your microscope? You look at things in it. Right. Rich's yes. microscope. Isn't it beautiful? Do you actually use it? No. If I hadn't looked at something for 20 years, I'm not sure whether I would be keeping it going forward. He's very practical. Personally, do you know what? I, that's what I would normally say, but you know, I can see that. Oh, you, you, love, you, this so you love this so much. You have loved this so much. I can't believe that anyone would say that Rich is a hoarder. <laughs> go on then, Reg, you can keep that. With just minutes to go, Reg and Tony have pulled together a smallish cell pile, but it looks very good quality. While Stephen and Haley have decluttered and downsized, they've got a skip load to get rid of and plenty of items to sell. But there's one sentimental snapshot of the past that Stephen has rediscovered, which is definitely a keeper. Oh. The Redmond <laughs> family. Yeah. You I mean, you, you sounded almost surprised to find that in, yes, in this box. definitely. There you go. That's Dad with a moustache. Oh, oh right. in Paris. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> bit like Sally Very different. Se. <laughs> Still sexy, though. And modest. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've always been that. As well as pictures of a dapper Stephen, there are also magical memories of the sister he lost over 40 years ago. Now, my sister was killed um, a year later, sadly. Uh, really? she, was, she was only 20. So do you have a strong memory for your sister? Oh, I do indeed. Um, she was the third youngest sister and therefore the sister closest to me. And how old were you when she died? 14. And she was, what, 20? 20. 20, yeah, yeah. Oh, that Sad. must have been terrible. Oh, yeah, Mum and Dad, um, I'll never forget the uh, the look on Mum and Dad's face when the police said um, she'd Unbelievable. gone. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So important, I'm uh, not going to go back in storage, eh? <laughs> yeah, let's keep them out this Yes, time. definitely. That's a lovely find for Stephen and one definitely worth taking home. Coming up, our antiques expert Tom Keane scours our hoarder's cell piles and estimates the value of Stephen's cufflinks. They're, they're good provenance, good provenance. You're going to do quite well. Oh, great. And we see how the items fare at auction. going to go three times. Excellent. Good start. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm helping two hoarders in need face their past, sort through their stash and decide whether to keep, skip or sell their belongings. To help recoup some of the money they've spent on storage, I've called in antiques expert Tom Keane to trawl through their cell piles and find any treasures to take to auction. Our first storage hoarder's stash to go under Tom's microscope is Magpie Stephen. After running out of room to house his vast collection of books, paintings and cufflinks, Stephen resorted to storage. Will Tom uncover any hidden gems? It's a funny mixture, really. Uh, there's loads of cufflinks that are quite valuable. There's some books that are quite valuable. And uh, these pictures are quite interesting. Unusual. It's not my taste, but I can see the value in them. Yeah. A lot of people won't like them, but there's other people who will actually love these. They've been made out of the bird's feathers. Yeah. And I suppose, let's be cautious and say 60 or 80 pounds for the pair wow. of those. These pictures are not to my taste, but Tom thinks they could fetch a good price at auction. What about the books? What do you think of the H.G. Wells one? Interesting. Interesting. Sign on the inside. Mm. These will have to go in front of a book specialist. Yes. The table here. Mm. 1930s. Oh, 1930s. 1930s oak. 
barley twist leg with a pie crust yeah. top. That's, I mean, that's so apt, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds fantastic. It used to be at 80 or 100 pounds 10 years ago. And you say 20 quid, and they say, no, we give you 12. And that's what it's worth, 12 quid. Yeah. Is that... 12 pounds, that's not the greatest amount. But Tom spotted something hidden at the back of the unit that could bring in a bit more cash. You've got a pair yes. of tan leather settees. Mm -hmm. Not bad though, are they? No, they're good. Hardly mm -hmm. used. 500 quid for the two. Well, let's oh, give it a go. Know, so that's all money. Yeah. If you're lucky. Like being in storage. Well, I'd say you've got a fair few thousand pounds I here, think haven't so, you? Yeah. 500 pounds for the sofas. That's more like it. With Haley's help, Stephen has done a great job divorcing himself of the collections he's amassed over the past 40 years. Among the items going to auction are a 1930s oak table, a large collection of porcelain animals from the 50s, 60s and 70s, and a pair of brown leather sofas. Also going to auction are the signed H.G. Wells book and the whole collection of bird pictures that are not my favourites, but Tom thinks they could be very attractive at auction. Lastly, it's Stephen's ever-expanding collection of cufflinks. Will Tom think there is top dollar in them? Two and a half thousand pairs of cufflinks, and you want to collect more. Yeah. Why have you got so many? Just, I love wearing them, and if you're collecting like I am, you can collect thousands of these and keep it, the collection relatively small. You've got loads of gold. Um, this is a good box, could make a Gower & Co. They came out of the house of Dame Agatha Christie as well. Wow. So they were fairly affluent people. What were you doing in there? Oh, I was in Exeter and there was a big sale from oh, Greenaway, right. the, her home. They came up in the auction and I mm. got them. I got them for £110. So. That was good. Mm. That was How long ago was that? Oh, ten years maybe. I bet you you get five to £800 for these at least. Wow. And That's they're, they're good provenance, good provenance. Mm. It might, might be a thousand. I mean, there's £500 now in the weight. Mm. It looks like Stephen has been quite shrewd with some of his purchases. Cufflinks have existed since the 1700s and they became very popular in the early 20th century. Currently, vintage clothing and accessories are very fashionable, so there should be a lot of interest in Stephen's cufflinks. To find out more, Tom has arranged for Stephen to meet cufflinks expert Ian Towning. I see you've got our cufflinks and you've had a chance to take a look at them. Absolutely. Oh, Fantastic collection here. You have really hunted high and low yes, to get indeed. a collection like this. There's a big market here for collecting, mm. you know, but they've got to be of a really yes. high standard because people want cufflinks for investment, not just to look at. So on this tray you have diamond ones, gold ones, and what you've got here is pretty good, you know, like the mixed ruby, mm. emerald, tourmaline, sapphire, with diamond edges to them. People like a bit of flash now, mm. you know, and I would put my money into that sort of thing so, yeah. rather than the metal mm. and gimmicky things mm. because they'll be slower to sell, whereas the real gold ones, real good quality silver ones, will sell. Great. Stevens decided to hold on to his absolute favourites, but with so many in his collection, there are still plenty of interest for Ian. I've picked out, like, the coin ones here, mm -hmm. the gold coins. There's gold ones in here. They're all over the place. You know, so I've accumulated them in one sort of area. That's gold. Uh, these are gold ones. And they're very pretty, very saleable. I would think we're talking about somewhere in the region of 800 to 1,000 pounds on this tray. Yeah, good. I think that sounds reasonable to me. you take 1,000 pounds off him? I'd pay a thousand pounds. Yeah, Good. I, I like that. Good. Yeah. So my collecting's paid off. Is that a deal? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a deal. Shake hands. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. A thousand pounds, that's a great result. And after taking a further look through Stephen's collection, some silver ones catch Ian's eye too. That's another 150 pounds into the kitty. So with Tom's help, they're already quids in. We've had a very good day and we're going away happy. Yeah, money in the pocket. Well, Stephen, if you're happy, I'm happy. Let's hope he has the same luck with his other items at auction. Our antiques expert, Tom Keane, is on hand to guide Stephen through the auction process. Well, Stephen, what do you think we'll sell today? Well, I'm interested in whether the pie crust table will make the £12 you thought it would. And, of course, the, the feather um, birds, you know. Aggie 
didn't like your framed pictures of birds. Oh, I know, she made that plain. I think mm. she'd like to put them in the bin. I think they'll make at least £100, I hope anyway. Um, is there anything you're sort of iffy about selling? Not at all. As you know, the, all these things have been up and down the country with me over decades. So, no, just delighted to let them go. The auction's about to begin. There's just time to find out what today's auctioneer, Nick Carter, thinks of Stephen's lots, starting with his feathered friends. My thoughts for the feather pictures are that they're just so dated. They're not the sort of thing that the modern market wants. They just don't fit in with modern interiors. I think the sofas will do OK today. They're the sort of thing we sell every week in our modern sale room. And leather sofas, they make 250, 300, 350 pounds every week. The lot I think will do best out of the grouping is the um, volume signed by HG Wells. I think HG Wells' signature has got to be worth 50 quid. Let's hope he's right. So, first up, the pie crust oak table, which Tom estimated at 12 pounds. Uh, Good. At uh, 20, pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 bid. Pounds. 35 is now bid, 35. We've got a bid on the room there at 35. Yeah. Going, going, gone, oh, you got good it. Good start, good start. Yeah. Almost a world bid. record price. We're off to a great start. 35 pounds is nearly three times Tom's estimate. Let's see if Haley's large collection of porcelain animals, estimated at 100 pounds, will also pocket a few pennies. Anyone want to bid me 80 for all of these Wade Whimsies? Does anyone want to bid me 80 pounds? So those aren't sold at 80. Not sold at 80 pounds, and the leather sofas also fail to attract a bid. However, the signed HG Wells book does make a comfortable 45 pounds. Finally, it's the feathered bird pictures I'm not that keen on, but Tom thinks will attract a good price. Let's see if they fly. 120, 130, oh, keep going, 160, 180. 200, ma'am? Yes, yeah, two's tonight. bid. Is it good? It's fantastic. 300, do you want to go 320? It's fine hard for you. Go it's bid. Yeah, it's really I'm going to go three times at 320 pounds, really? 320. Oh, excellent. Oh, that, that was good, wasn't it? 320. Good. Stephen, you're not bird pictures. I must have a look. So, the bird pictures really took off, and it just goes to show how much I know. Well, Stephen, that was up and down, wasn't it? It was. How do you feel? Well, I really enjoyed the birds going for £320. I thought that was great. I paid nothing like that for them. With auctions, you can't predict what's going to happen. No, no. Two people want something, the valuation goes out the window. I thought of £100 if you're lucky. Mm. Aggie thought a bin job. Yeah. And we got £320. Fantastic. I love the word we, not uh, you. Now it's yeah. we now. After commission, Stephen has made £320 from his items at auction. Add to this the £1,150 he made selling his cufflinks and his grand total amounts to £1,470. And if he does manage to clear his storage unit, he'll be saving well over £400 a year. As for his remaining unsold items, Stephen has decided to try his luck at a specialist auction. That's what I like to hear. Have you enjoyed the whole experience of storage hoarders? Yes, well, I'm a collector, Tom, rather than a hoarder. But uh, that apart, yes, it's been great. And as you know, I've got a lot less hoarded now. And the best moment for you? I suppose me and Haley just coming down together and uh, recognising everything in those containers. Funny, I, I thought you were going to say it was meeting Aggie, but there you are. Yeah, I did think about that, but she didn't like those birds. Oh, that's true, yeah, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. So, not only has Stephen managed to confront his hoarding habit, some of his collectible items have also paid dividends. Great news for both him and his daughter Haley. Let's hope our next hoarder, Reg, has just as much luck. Coming up, Tom rifles through Reg's possessions. He came from Saudi Arabia. He? He's a boy. Oh, gotcha. And the auction has everyone on tenterhooks. I don't know about you, but this is nerve-wracking. Yours in, sir, for £50. Thank you. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I've been helping two people decide whether to keep, skip, or sell the contents of their storage units. Earlier in the programme, Magpie Stephen and daughter Haley made a great sale on his collection of cherished cufflinks and had a successful day at auction. Gonna go three times at 3.20. Stephen, you're looking at bird pictures. I, have, I must have a look. Next up is international banker Reg, who's kept all his worldly possessions locked up in transit for years on end, costing him thousands of pounds. Oh, my goodness me, you've got such a lot of boxes. But he has rediscovered some Arabic art that surprised us all. 
each painting of anything between 15 and 20,000. Wow. Even with an impressive valuation, Reg is still undecided whether to part with the gifts from the Saudi prince. Our antiques expert, Tom Keane, has had a closer look at the items on Reg's cell pile. Will there be any more valuable treasures to surprise us? Now, Tom, our Reg here has got treasures from all around the world, and I'm very excited. Why? Because I think it's so different from anything I've ever seen before. Yeah, you're right, there's some interesting things, isn't there? I like the look at this. What can you tell me about the gun, the rifle? The rifle? Well, he came from uh, Saudi Arabia. He? He, it's a boy. Oh, gotcha. And it was made in the UK. Now, this tells me it's a percussion cap. Okay. There you are. After the flint knocks, about 1830, this rifle. 1830, wow. 1840, that's all period. Mm. Um, hexagonal barrel. Not too heavy, is it? But no, they're, they're, it is. <laughs> the fellow's on, on the back of Camelback, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nomadic herdsmen use these still, some of these. OK. This rifle is worth 150 to 250 pounds. That's a good start. So, what about Reg's rugs? You've got some nice rugs here, haven't you? I have, thank you, yes. Where did you get these from? Um, Saudi Arabia and Dubai. Well, these are... This, this is Iranian, this one, isn't it? Correct, that's Iranian. It, it, it's I think... Fahan. It's yeah, Fahan, that's all it is. you, your knowledge. Certainly, these two are really worth okay. going to work with. Anything else you'd like to know about, Aggie? Yes. I mean, what are colours over there? There's a set of four. Oh, the uh, Le Canifs. Uh, yes. Le Canifs? Le, yes. Well, was that an Arab name? No, 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 it's a French name. I don't know the artist, but you can see she's heavily influenced by Picasso. <laughs> isn't she? You <laughs> I see think that in the so. face and the way yeah. it's done. I don't know the artist, and uh, I handle quite a lot of art, so I wouldn't have said there's a lot of value, but they're probably decorative value only. Original paintings by Linda Le Canif often sell for thousands of pounds, but these are lithographs, which is a type of print. Their estimated auction value is between 75 and 100 pounds each. The other items Tom's picked out to take to auction are a 19th century Middle Eastern percussion cap rifle, a rare Afghan pictorial rug, a 20th century Isfahan rug, a collection of six chess sets by Studio Anne Carlton and four Chinese framed propaganda prints. Lastly, Tom has uncovered a collection of book plate maps that have got him quite excited. I like this, I like this a lot. John Speed, a yeah. John Speed map. Now, very often if you see a book plate, something to be framed from a book plate, it would really devalue the price. But as most of John Speed's maps were made as book plates, it's quite normal. Now, how do we know it's a book plate? Don't know, you tell me. OK, so you've got a crease right down the middle of it. Oh, yes. John Speed was the first English man ever to produce a world atlas. So he was working in the late 17th, early 18th century. Six to eight hundred pounds is a good auction estimate for it, and it should fly out the door for that. What do you know about this? I just picked that up about 20 years ago. Can you remember how much you paid for I it? I think I probably paid a couple of hundred for it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's good That's start. not a bad... Oh, well, that's all right. You, you do quite well at that one, yeah. then. Antique maps are very popular investment pieces at the moment. Because Reg owns four of them, I want him to get an expert opinion on their history and value. So I've sent Reg and Tom to a specialist map shop to meet expert Philip Curtis. Is John Speed the most valuable, or the is it the other maps around? Uh, He's one of them, better? certainly the most sought after. The, the reason being, he was the first Englishman, and a rather basic um, thing for collectors. He's also in English, so the text is understandable to the English-speaking collectors, which cover America. So he's always been very sought after. Maps produced by John Speed are very much in demand as well as valuable. Some can even cost up to a million pounds. So, what's the value of Reg's map? If I was an auctioneer, I would like to put it in at, say, 700 to 1,000. I would hope it might make 1,500, that sort of range. As a historical map, it is not as sought after as some of the, as it were, contemporary maps, because it's not showing the world as Speed thought it was. What it's showing is the Roman world, as he thought it was. See, I told you it was no good, didn't I? Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's still a good price. I think it's, 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 not it's not bad. It's not bad. Well, it's, well, it's a wonderful map. <laughs> to have one sought-after map in such a small collection is great news for Reg, but to have two is even better. This is by Robert Dudley. 
is from the first sea atlas ever done on Mercator's projection. This is a nice example of a Dudley map. It's um, the coast of China in the region of 1,000 to um, 1,500, even 2,000 pounds. Would there be a good investment to keep? John Speed's got one of the great names. Robert Dudley, fascinating, rare, interesting maps, an interesting man, and it's a very interesting area. And there are several million millionaires who might well want a map. So I would have thought both those are very good mm. um, things to hold on to. I must admit, I've always had those maps out, and they don't take too much space, and they're always a talking point. So um, let's see. I'll think about it. Reg has decided to keep hold of his maps for now. It's auction time, and I want to know if he's also made a decision on selling his valuable Arabic paintings. So, Reg, I hear you have some interesting valuations on those paintings. Yes, those Saudi paintings. It was yeah. absolutely unbelievable. Jamie came in at uh, 15 to 20,000 pounds at auction on a good day. And on a super day, he said up to 50. He knows a number of private buyers he thinks might be interested in them. So uh, watch this space. Wow. Let's hope he makes a tidy sum on them. How do you feel about everything being sold today? I'm very excited. Um, I don't think it's going to make a big hole in the 20 volt container. But I reckon, I've been doing some sort of mental arithmetic, I reckon about £1,500, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is a little bit less than I'd hoped for. But yes. um, it's still fun. Yeah. And that'll go towards my trip to Antarctica. That's right. That's right, yeah. Here's to Regislot's really flying today. We just have time to find out what auctioneer Stephen Hearn thinks of them. Well, Reg's entry has presented me as the auctioneer with a bit of a challenge from composite chess sets to Chinese propaganda. I would like to have had Reg's carpets, which he's got entered, five years ago. They would have done extremely well. But the carpet trays, a bit of a decline just at the present time. Uh, they are very, very interesting, the Afghan carpet particularly. Also, if all else fails, we've got Reg's rifle, a good Arab rifle, something probably 100, 120 years old, but it still <laughs> looks as though it could do the job if it had to. And there are collectors for this type of rifle. We're going to see over £100 for it, no doubt. Well, the auction's about to start. How exciting is that? Good luck. Thanks so much. You all need a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> right, now we get onto something slightly different. It's the moment of truth as Reg's items go under the hammer and he's eager to see his things converted into a ticket to Antarctica. First up, the framed Chinese propaganda pictures. Tom estimated them at 75 to 100 pounds each. Let's see what the bidders make of the first one. Yes. 65, 70, oh, yeah, okay. five, yes. 100 pounds. Yes. You're yes. out at the back. <laughs> He's going then to Madam then at 100 pounds. That's a good start. OK, good start. Good, start. good start. start. Yeah. That's a great price for one. And the next two sell just as quickly. That's 300 pounds in the bag. Reg also sells three of his lithograph prints, adding another £225 to the pot. Next up is one of the chess sets collected from Reg's travels. Rightio, there's a chess set. What about £100 for it? Right, here we are. Good chess set. 40 I bid for that one, then a five. And yeah, 50 yeah. I have it. 50 at the very back, then. Madam, no more, she says. Yours then, sir, for £50. Thank you. £50, that's a great result. And the other three are just as popular, making a fantastic total of £210. Will Reg have just as much luck with the Arabian rifle? £90 and 100 uh, uh, Surely that one more will do it, sir. Yes or no, sir? 100 I have it, I thought oh, so. £100. Hundred pounds. Thank you. I don't know about you, Not but this is nerve-wracking. £100. Reg is going great guns. Last under the hammer are the exotic rugs. No one bids for the first two, so all eyes are on the Afghan pictorial rug. Can Reg end on a high? Are we going to see 450 for it? 400, 360 bid. Are you 70 bid? And five and 80. Selling at 375 then. Thank you. 375 pounds, that's a fantastic end to proceedings. And I hear that Reg has more where they came from. I've got about another 20 in storage. 20? 
20, another 20. Another 20, yeah. I'll get them all out and give it to a specialist auction. Reg may have some way to go before he empties his unit, but at least he's on the right track. And after commission, he's made an amazing £1,076.90 at auction. That will go a long way towards his Antarctic adventure. And if Reg continues to downsize and completely clear out his unit, he could also put a yearly storage saving of over £750 towards it too. That was a bit of a mixed bag there, wasn't it? Some sold, some didn't. Paintings and the posters all moved. Yes. The musket went. Yes. So uh, they just hit reserves, but yes. it doesn't matter. They've moved, and uh -huh. that's the most important thing. Good. Got to make a bit more room, and that's the object of the exercise. Mission accomplished. So do you think now that you've started on this road, do you think you'll be able to continue yourself? Absolutely. I've bitten the bullet. Mm -hmm. I know what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go and do it. So, and it uh, might be a lot of fun as well along the way. It will be great fun. Good for you, Reg. That's what I like to hear. Well, what a fantastic result. Some of the most valuable hidden treasures we found on storage hoarders so far. It just goes to show what could be hiding away. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders to wade through that stash to find the hard cash.